Yeah, yeah I'm ready to go in there. I was watching it. I'm ready to get in there. Yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, like I said earlier, I grew up in the church. For me, I, my uh, family actually had our own ministry called Rehoboth Outreach Center. And, you know, I was always playing drums, singing, whatever it was they needed. So we had, we moved to like three different locations. My father was the original uh, pastor of the church and then I moved to my mom. My father passed away tragically when I was four from a heart attack, but I got my singing from him and my grandmother. And um, 
Yeah, at his actual funeral, I think my mom tells me the story every every single time and she thinks about him. He, she, they brought me, they called me up to the altar room, right next to his casket, and the pastor literally prophesied over me saying, if you think that my father was talented, he held me, he said, this little boy right here is gonna be triple the talent that he ever was. And it's crazy because my talents is literally triple the talents that my pops had for me. So you know, I always think about that story and I just know like, I know I have a calling on my life for me. And like, um, I had multiple chances to like, make it already, you know. I, I've done a lot of uh, shows and could have gone on a lot of shows. For instance, um, around February in 2020, it was just my, which is when my grandmother died. I was supposed to go to The Voice. I got accepted to America's Got Talent and The Voice at the same time, actually. And I was supposed to go, but the week I was supposed to leave, my grandmother passed away and I couldn't go, man. I just couldn't do it. What if I fall? What if I lose it all? Would you begin to hear my call? What if I, what if I pray? Would you be here to stay? Would you be here to heal my pain? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my grandmother, man, that that was my rock, boy. That was, cause my grandmother, it got to the point where I, she was she was blind actually, so I I was always the one taking care of her, cause it used to be me and her in the house. You know, my mom had to go to work, my brothers and sisters had to go to work. So me as a youngest, I had to take care of my grandmother. Whenever she needed something, she was hungry, used the bathroom, changed clothes, whatever it was, I was always there. So I was always kind of forced to grow up early. So my grandmother, you know, that's always been someone that I've cared about very, very, very dear to my heart. You see, I got her tatted like on my body like five times, man. She just, man, that, that whole process really made me and her cling a lot. So the crazy part is the day before, the, the time she died, she waited. She was literally waiting for me to come home because every time I come home from school, I give her a kiss and I go to my room. So that same day she died, I came home and I gave her a kiss and I said, Grandma, I love you. And then she said, I love you too, Cliff. And I went to my room and then like two minutes later, my mom busted my room, crying, talking about something. She just took her last breath. So, you know, it was, I don't know. I just, I like to cling on to that feeling that she was waiting for me to come home so she could, so she could just say, I love you one more time. You know, my grandmother, she was always, she would just ask me to like sing for her at random times. You know, she would ask me to like, oh, can you, like we used to sing songs together in church, I remember. She used to have this little shaker in church that she used to shake, and everybody knew her. She could be anywhere in the church. Anybody would know it was her if she had the shaker, feel me? Like, it was just, it was little shit like that that just made me love her so much, bro. Like, she was so musically inclined. Like, she don't care what age she was at, she could still blow, for sure. Like, <laughs> blow people out the water, feel me? So, you know, it was, she was just like, she was a, she was a powerhouse, bro. I promise you. And she just like, she was always pushing me to do better, always pushing me to do my music. I was telling me to never stop singing because my voice is anointed, and I believe that to this day. I saw I have her tattooed on me. Every time I go to a performance, I have it right here on my tattoo. It says, nothing's forever, and it has the time she passed. And I kiss it every time before I sing for a performance, if I do something, because I know she's watching over me. I know she's right next to me. So, you know, it's it's just, you know, she's she's always there with me, feel me? So, rest in peace, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna just be straight up with y'all. Um, there's a lot of artists in where I'm from, but there's, I promise you, there's something different about me. Like, I, I, I want to work for this shit. Like, I want to win, feel me? Like, I, I got to win, feel me? Like, my family, they push me to do, they push me to my best, bro. And, like, my grandmother and my pops, I know I got to make it for them because that's all they ever wanted for me. And, you know, my family, even since I was younger, they always called me the golden child. And they always called me the chosen one which is why my name is Chosen right now as my artist, feel me? So it's just like, all the things that happen, I know everything happens for a reason. I never question God, because I know God always knows what's in store, for me? So even through the death, I know they would always want me to be right here where I'm at right now, doing everything that I need to be doing, feel me? And I, I promise you, every time I see an artist on stage, I don't get upset that I'm not there. I get inspired, cause that junk, that junk. Cause I already have a fire inside of me that makes me wanna, already be on top, feel me? Like, I wanna be my own boss, feel me? 
Like, and every time I see an artist that's there, that shit fuels me. That shit made me want to work even harder, because I promise you I'm going to get to the top one day, and y'all going to see me, and y'all going to remember the name Chosen, for me, because that's, that's who I am, for me. So, yeah. All right, so my inspirations. Actually, no, let's start from my, my household. My household, man, I'm going to just say we didn't have, like, a certain genre we were listening to, for me. Like, we would love, my, my grandma always told me, make sure that you know every genre because you don't want to be stuck in a box, for me. You want to. If some, let's say somebody want to come for you for a feature, you got to know how to come on that track. You can't just have one sound, feel me? So I always try to be versatile, feel me? So my household, we was always listening. I might remember we was listening to gospel, a lot of gospel. I love gospel because that's always, gospel was always the number one thing for me, feel me? So it was gospel. And my, my inspiration when I was younger that I always grew up listening to was, his name was Molly Music. Molly Music is kind of a contemporary uh, gospel artist. He, his, his songs have actual meaning. And you know, it, I grew up on him, I grew up on J. Cole, I grew up on Jonah Lucas. They're all like, they're all like powerful rappers that, they, talk, they like to talk about the things that people in this world are scared to talk about, feel me? So I've always, I've always been the one to always kind of like push the button, feel me? So that's to my type of music. As you can tell, my music is a mixture. I don't like to stay in the box. My music is a mixture of it can it can be in multiple genres. It can be in gospel, R and B, pop. It don't matter as long as the me as long as my message get across. I don't care what genre it is, cause if it's if God gave me God, God gave me that message to put in my music, and if it's the right message, then it's gonna go it's gonna go to the star with whatever genre it's in for me. So yeah, that was my inspirations. I listened to a lot of uh, Derek Minor. Um, I didn't really listen to rap like that unless it was like Christian rap. I listened to Andy Minio, Lecrae. All them, you know, those are my inspirations. I didn't really get into like the worldly rap until around middle school, high school. So I listened to like Kodak. Man, I ain't gonna lie, I was into a lot of Kodak. Middle school, summer school, boy, I was, <laughs> I was the whole bunch of stuff. I was listening to Kodak. I was listening to um, yeah, I used to listen to a lot of. I listened to a lot of uh, worldly music growing up. And then, um, by the time I was in high school, you know, I was my music taste was kind of like everywhere. I just yeah, so I was you know doing my own thing. But yeah, that was that was kind of like my inspiration background for me type shit. All right, so here's my thing, right? So the way my passion for music never leaves is that I never stop singing. Like, it doesn't matter what time of day it is. It doesn't matter. I could be sleeping. I could see people tell me I literally sleep. I, I sing in my sleep. Like, singing is a part of me that I can never let go. And that's how I always stay at the top of my game because I never let, my grandmother, used to, my grandmother always used to tell me to like, never let anybody shut you up. For me, and that's always that's always been something that's I've, I've held on really strong to because I don't ever let anybody let me be quiet because that's my that's my gift for me that's my gift that I got from God for me so like yeah that's it. it really sound like that all this shit that I don't heard I can't believe it Jeremiah all that man that boy done hurt my heart already man I ain't gonna lie I can't believe none of it. I see that boy personally, that boy really got it, you feel me? So, acapella shit. Niggas ain't doing that. Niggas doing that, um, that reverb. <laughs> Nigga want the reverb mic on stage with him. <laughs> Hey, I get you. Beyonce, say, damn man, they fucking me up. They trying to sabotage. No, why you sabotage yourself from the jump? Come fake it. <laughs> Talking about that. They don't know if I put them on that auto tune. They put them in the room. They don't know if they put them in the room. No, but shit. If you would have did it regardless, you probably wouldn't even have that. You know that auto tune on your ass, and you got it in the room. No, yo, you was all right. That's definitely wrong. No, you wasn't supposed to have no tune. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You don't need none of that shit. Nigga gonna do it with a DJ mic. Sound like a nigga. The pyramids on the beat. I'm trying to keep my head above the water. But sometimes it feels we're both going under. We can't keep pretending. There's a happy ending. Knowing what we want. 